How's it going, everyone? This is Wendell. Long time no see. Yes, it's been a couple weeks that I haven't uploaded any Blender tutorials. I was super busy shooting jobs on locations, and、uh, apparently Sydney just came out of the lockdown. So yeah, more work. Anyway, so today our topic about how to light a bottle. Of glass bottles in Blender, a lot of times I get a DM, a, a private message from、uh, Instagram. People ask me, "Yeah, your 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 render looks very nice. It looks very photorealistic and、uh, professional lit. And、uh, I'm using the same model and build the same thing, but it doesn't come out with the same result.、Uh, apparently, from my experience, a lot of times it's because people don't know how to light." Properly in the in 3D world, because the knowledge of lighting actually coming from the real physics and how light works. And、uh, if you really don't have a good knowledge understanding of lighting in the real world, like a photographer, you probably have it challenging to do that. Although you can 3D model something very fancy, very cool, but the lighting is gonna ruin everything. So today we are gonna talk about this. As you can see here on our.、Uh, Uh, uh, screen. This is a typical lighting setup that、uh, a lot of beginners does. This is a lot of people call that three point lighting setup. So basically, what it is is we have three lights, right?、Uh, one is key light, which is the brightest light for the subject, and、uh, and the, the other ones on on the, the other side is called a fill light, which is basically just kind of bounce some shadow up,、uh, actually decrease the The darkness of shadow on that side,、uh, that's called the fill light. And then we have another、uh, a light in the back、uh, areas, so people can you can call it the rim light, or you can call it it's kind of backlighting、uh, for that. So that's kind of typically what people do for for lighting. And a lot of 3D artists that just kind of setting as default using three point light. But apparently, it doesn't really just work for. Everything you know, a lot of times people doing、uh, monsters and some crazy textures is that it was not really photo realistic purpose.、Uh, three point lightings might work, you know, just emphasize the 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 three D dimensions of the model. But in the because our purpose is for. Photorealistic product rendering, so it doesn't work in our case. If you, I'm going to the camera view, this just doesn't looks like professional lit. As you can see here, the big reflection from the the light right here. Although they are perfectly、uh, uh, shaped and、uh, and evenly lit in the 3D world, but it still doesn't looks good for to represent to present this bottle. And also, you can see here the rim light. Although you can you can actually select the rim light, kind of do a little bit manipulation, or even you can adding another rim light, but it just the result just feels like this entire bottle looks flat. You know, it doesn't have that professional look, and the people always、uh, quickly build this kind of like backdrop in some way, and、uh, you know how to do that. That I don't I don't want to、uh, explain that. In this tutorials, I want to focus on the bigger concept, which is how to light、uh, glassy or very reflective product, and、uh, like this bottle. So this is the beginner lighting setup right here. So I'm gonna uncheck off, and I'm gonna turn on the pro lighting setup I just made. So so、uh, quickly, you will see the distinguish between the pro and、uh, beginners. Lighting setup, and as you can see here, I want to point out some couple of things like、uh, why this image looks good.、Uh, as you can see here, we have a pretty nice defined edge line, and、uh, in this photo between the bright、uh, high, uh, white into this darkness, and also we have some kind of gradients going on here. It's not just a, a, a solid white or solid、uh, black, so we have kind of some kind of like. 3D gradients to actually representing the the shape of this bottle, and also you can see here on the top cap, there's beautiful gradient over here across across over here, and <clears throat> and of course we have a very nice uh, uh, reflections and shadows over here to represent the whole thing. It just looks more. Uh, three dimensional, you know, it's it's not it doesn't looks that flat and.、Uh, 
pretty pretty interesting to look at it. So how can how did I did it? Well, let's go into the uh, lighting setup and uh, also have, let me show you how I set up the the material for each thing. So if I we are zooming out here, as you can see here, this is more like a box, right? And uh, and uh, the key things remember: lighting, reflective surface, uh, reflective uh, items is is all about the environment. It's not about what light come out onto this subject. It's about the environment. Okay, it's about their surrounding. Okay, as you can see here, we have some lights going on here. They're pretty much identical. But as you can see here, this is kind of like a from black and kind of have a, a gradient into white. This is not just one area light that you want to just typically add shift A lighting. I don't use these light. It's just because some of them are not really photorealistic. Uh, if, especially when you're trying to light a reflective surface. Uh, and well, I just don't use these default light. I build a plane. How do you do that? You just basically shift A, adding a plane. And uh, and scale up, and I, I'm just gonna drag over here and I show you how to do that. Okay, so now we are going to go to the uh, shading tab. So I can just adding a new material. So hit new, and this is the default uh, principal BSDF. So what I what's happening here is. Um, this red squares I used to have a add-on to actually kind of preview the materials, but this is the Blender 3.0, yeah. So uh, the I haven't actually updated that the plugin yet, uh, add on yet. So uh, just please ignore that. What I, I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna just delete this one. Hit uh, select that X and Shift A to add a um, uh, emission shader. I sometimes I don't wanna do that. I can just tap uh, search and hit emission. Type emission E and put in here and just quickly hook it up. So now, as you can see here, this is bright, and this is acting just like area light. There's no differences. You can just changing the the brightness, whatever. And there's no differences on that. Uh, but next thing I want to do is I'm I want to adding some gradients in here. All right. So I'm going to uh, shift A, add a gradient, uh, gradient textures put here, and uh, I can even using Alt holding alt and the right click uh, and then just do a lazy connect so as you can see here suddenly we have something going on here as a gradient and it's the default setting is uh, linear we can actually changing to the easing so actually give you a little bit more and uh, smoother uh, transitions between the black and white there's a more gray idea uh, area gray at Areas. So this is not enough, right? So as you can see here, we have a little bit more over there. What we can do here is we can add a color ramp, color ramp uh, to actually control that. But before this, I'm actually going to hit Control T to add a map node on the texture. And how how this is actually uh, because the uh, Node regular add on, you can just go to here at uh, edit uh, preferences and uh, you can go with the uh, add ons. Here you can just type a uh, note regular add on. You can just make sure to check as default is coming with a uh, default add on is coming with the blender anyway. Uh, and then what you can do here, I can just drop grab this and drop in here between that. Now it feels like oh, suddenly it's gone. Um, I don't know where is it. Uh, what we can do here, we can just change the um, the text coordinate uh, node and then between map from the generated to object. All right, to do that, as you can see here, we suddenly have something going on here, but this is not in the right positions. So what we can do here, we can just rotate on the Z, uh, Y axis, forty five degree. So just uh, yeah, you can see that that's actually having kind of like half a half even so now what we can do here we can just actually adding uh, one more point to adjusting the gray area as you can see here if I'm dragging over here it's more it become more darker on that side right yeah so I can actually get in a little bit more 
uh, a gradient out of that. But I, and also you may want to know like yeah, so Wenbo, this is getting too much darkness. I want a little bit more bright for sure. What we can do? Well, the next thing we can do here, we can just manipulating the mapping here. Uh, just kind of dragging along y axis and at the same time you can hold control uh, hold the shift key just kind of slowly drag in the small increment in here right if i without holding shift i you know that's that's too quick i'm holding the shift now and then it's actually you can do that and there's quite a bit of stuff that you can manipulate as you can see more gray uh, less gray and more brightness anyway so this light is being built so next thing you, you can do is you can just uh, hit R to rotate or whatever it is your position to that area okay so now you know how to how to do this type of light on this side right uh, next thing we want to go for is the what is the background uh, right here the background is very just like the the area light I was just talking about emission shader and you can put a strength put in the back that's it and that's for the background the backlit light all right so we have the the both si uh, light on the side and these are called in photography world it's called a flag which means it's trying to cutting off some light and also because if we'll get to go back to the uh, to the camera view over here and open up this folder uh, let's see the flag what's happening for the flag as you can see closely because this is the, this is this bottle right it's a cylinder it's actually have kind of fish eye type of surface like that I will reflecting everything around it what you can do is is actually going to reflecting things around it if I'm turn off the flag watch on the edge it's very minor differences you see it's as actually the black edge of that and a lot of times you might not see it in the 3d world was because sometimes in the default settings or the areas that all the surrounding out of the your your setup they're 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 considered black because there doesn't have information with it and um, in the reality in the real world there will be something around it and and uh, sometimes you probably just need using these black card to getting some uh, reflection out of on the surrounding so you probably don't need that at this time or sometimes when we play play place the position of the light because remember this gradient this is also have some black in here this edge my reflecting the black out of here not there but having this just give you extra security for the over extra control on the edge of this bottle to have this uh, defined edge on here okay the blackness okay so in this case uh, this black is actually coming from this big soft lighting gradient lighting is actually reflecting on this side of it um, a lot of time you can just kind of like uh, manipulating try it and another thing for I want to point it out is the top uh, the top one is just uh, another flag that I, I'm trying to use uh, but this this effect is, can be very significant so I will go to the camera view again tap a zero on the number uh, number number by, uh, pad and uh, if I'm turn off this as you can see here we're losing some edge on the top it's just because the backlight the backlighting is too big uh, and sometimes it can actually kind of bounce on the light from this angle uh, it's actually act, acting like that well yeah you can make it smaller but uh, the the quality of the lighting is the, definitely the bigger is the better you can play with it what I do did what I just simply adding a flag on the top so that what you what's happening here let's go back to camera view again so as you can see here we, we have rescued some uh, beautiful edge on the on there so turn it off you see it's overlaid on that side on the edge if I'm turn it back on we get some beautiful gradients in the darkness on the on the neck okay so that's pretty much what we have here and for the surface okay for the surface I want to point out because we're directly back lit uh, our bottle so we we can do a quite a bit on our surface 
uh, on the ground in order to get different reflection. This is one thing that I have uh, showed you guys in uh, one of the tutorials to show how to do pure white background uh, of photography. So anyway, so what we can here, I'm just selecting the floor, right? And you can see here the floor is the specular is, is all the way to one. The roughness is barely just point point zero one because if I'm doing absolutely zero, it does it's not it's not really real like realistic. I know it's not supposed to happening in the real life, so I just put it in there. What we can tr control here, we actually uh, is not using the any roughness to con control the. We can use the roughness to control the blurriness of sharpness of the reflection. You see that it's be gone, but. Uh, we want to seamlessly transitioning from the white to the foreground. So the we were just gonna st still control the the roughness, the relatively small number. So you can see here, there's no uh, actually defined line between the pure white because it's simply just reflecting from there. And uh, if you know you want to know why, then you can watch the previous tutorials about how the light works in the physics. Anyway, so. The next thing we can do, we can control the base color. And right now it's kind of like a gray color. What we can do here, if I'm do a dial to all the way white to the white, as you can see here, the reflection is it looks a little bit milky and less contra uh, contrast. So what I can do if I drag it all the way to the black, you can see here it's very contrasty and then clear on the on the reflective which is going to render a different result uh, for the photos of this bottle and and you can just kind of play around with it and try your 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 3d model and if you have uh, something like this uh, glass bottle this is super uh, difficult to to light when you actually work in the a real photography studio uh, but glad we have a uh, um, 3D software is actually powerful enough to do similar result, and um, which is much easier. We can just apply same knowledge uh, from the photography and to the 3D world, and uh, actually getting something really cool out of it. Um, I think that's about it. And always, I feel free to to tag me or 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 follow me on Instagram. Uh, Anything you 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 think this tutorial is helpful for, uh, when you're doing your product rendering, uh, please let me know, and I'll be so happy to see your result and uh, see what what we, I can help with you through the lighting and uh, just helping you get a much better result. Yeah, and hit likes and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and there will be more uh, wonderful tutorials coming up in the uh, year 2022. Yeah. Love you all. Bye. See you in the next video.